Hello and welcome to Get to Know Science. This video is about nuclear fission and fusion. Nuclear fission is the splitting of a large unstable nucleus which releases a large amount of energy. Fission doesn't happen spontaneously. Usually we would need to fire a slow moving neutron into the nucleus to cause fission to happen. The nucleus absorbs the neutron and splits forming two smaller nuclei. In doing so it emits two or three neutrons and some gamma rays and a large amount of energy is released when it splits. These neutrons are called fission neutrons and they can then be absorbed by other nuclei and cause more fission reactions to occur. So we can see here that the initial neutron triggered a fission of this nucleus which split into two smaller nuclei and emitted these three neutrons. Those three neutrons can then go and be absorbed by another three nuclei which will then again fission releasing lots of energy and emitting more neutrons which will then go and be absorbed by more nuclei. So you can see here that this reaction is a chain reaction which gets larger and larger at each stage. So this is what we mean when we say that nuclear fission is a chain reaction. Now not all substances are fissionable. The two most commonly used fissionable isotopes are uranium-235 and plutonium-239. So these nuclei would be nuclei, for example, of uranium-235 because it's a fissionable material. Now since nuclear fission leads to a chain reaction which gets larger and larger each time it happens, it can get out of hand quite quickly. Therefore inside nuclear reactors we have ways of controlling the nuclear reaction so that it remains safe. This is a pressurized water reactor. It has control rods which are these here. They can be raised or lowered in between the fuel rods and they can regulate the chain reaction by absorbing the fission neutrons. So the fuel rods are where the nuclear material is and these control rods are in between them and they can be raised or lowered in order to regulate the chain reaction and they do that by absorbing those fission neutrons that are being emitted with each fission and this keeps the chain reaction under control. Moving the control rods down will slow down the reaction and moving them up will allow the chain reaction to speed up. The whole thing is surrounded by water and the water has two main functions. It acts as a coolant which means it takes heat from the core, all of that energy that is released by those fission reactions, it takes that heat energy from the core and exchanges it with another system of pipes that connect to the turbines. So these pipes here, they connect to the turbines and the water in these pipes takes the heat from the reactor and exchanges it here and that heat energy is then passed on to this water which moves on to the turbines. The second thing the water does is it acts as a moderator. This means that the neutrons being emitted collide with the water particles which slows them down. The neutrons need to be traveling slowly so that they can be absorbed by the nuclei. So the water also acts as a moderator which helps the fission reaction to continue. Lastly, the core is made of thick steel in order to withstand the high temperatures and pressures caused by the reaction. And there are also thick concrete walls to absorb any radiation that escapes. To contrast with this, the explosion from a nuclear weapon is an example of an uncontrolled nuclear chain reaction. And of course, we don't want that to happen when we're trying to generate electricity. And that's why we have all of those safety features and control features in the nuclear reactor. Okay, so now we move on to nuclear fusion, which is very different to nuclear fission. 
Nuclear fusion is when two lighter nuclei join to form a heavier nucleus. So for example, hydrogen can fuse to form heavy hydrogen. So these two hydrogen nuclei can fuse to form what's called a heavy hydrogen nucleus. And in the process, it releases lots of energy. And then what can happen is that heavy hydrogen can then fuse with another hydrogen nucleus, forming an isotope of helium, helium-3. And that also releases lots of energy. And then that helium nucleus can then fuse with another helium nucleus and produce helium-4, which is the usual type of helium that we're used to seeing. And in the process, of course, releasing lots of energy again, and also emitting these two protons or hydrogen nuclei. At each stage in this process, energy is being released, as well as particles and other things like gamma rays and things like that. But we don't really need to think about the particles and, and rays that are being emitted, just the fact that lots of energy is being produced. Now this fusion reaction leads to an enormous release of energy. In fact, fusion reactions release way more energy than fission. Since hydrogen is readily available on Earth and helium is a harmless gas, it means that nuclear fusion would be a great alternative way to provide energy to the world. The thing is, it requires huge amounts of heat and pressure to make it happen. And this is because nuclei are both positively charged and therefore they will repel each other. So large amounts of heat and pressure have to be applied in order to force them together to fuse. And the only place where fusion happens naturally is in stars, which have the required heat and pressure at their core. Scientists have done some fusion reactions on Earth, but they have tended to use up more energy than they have released because of the fact that we have to provide so much energy to make it the required temperature and pressure in order to make the fusion reaction happen, it actually costs us more energy on Earth than it releases. So the only place that this realistically happens for free is in stars like the sun. Okay, so that was a video on nuclear fission and fusion. I hope you found it helpful. As always, make sure you like, comment, share and subscribe and I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching.